the philosophical mindset, take zero. What is the mindset of an industry 4.0 professional? Number one, absolutely 100% they are values driven. What does being values driven mean? What it means is that there are core values that you adhere to that are more important than anything else. I can tell you this, you can go to any corporation in the United States and they're gonna have core values. And I'll promise you, none of those core values are gonna, will ever say that we value profit above all else, okay? Yet, there are, hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of companies in the United States and globally who value profit above all else. That means that they are values driven, but they're not honest about what that value is. So they communicate one set of values, but they chase another set of values. In the industry 4.0 professional is values driven, okay? Purely values driven. In our case, that those values are transparency, authenticity, expertise, humility, and faith-based servant leadership. Number two. My mindset, opinions vary, <laughs> okay? The opinions are going to vary. I don't pay a lot of attention to opinions that I think are wrong. Um, and, and, and listen, I'm not gonna be nice and say that everyone's opinion matter, it doesn't. Opinions are going to vary. Well, opinions are tools. Um, when your audience tells you what their opinion is, it's an opportunity for you to use that opinion as a filter, right? You think of it as a strainer, right? I'm gonna strain out the people whose opinions don't align with what mine do with respect to our profession and our mission here, okay? Um, number three, I'm focused on facts and empirical data. I go with my gut when it comes to decisions because my gut doesn't fail me. But the reason my gut doesn't fail me is because I believe that I'm transparent and authentic with myself and therefore my gut reactions align with the way that my brain operates, right? So they, they work in unison with one another as opposed to where I may, I, may, I may espouse certain values verbally, but internally I have different values. Therefore, my gut and my brain would not line up. I am focused on facts and empirical data, and therefore my gut follows the facts and the empirical data. This is important because when we are fact-based, when we use empirical data to draw conclusions, when we use facts, to hypothesize what we believe an outcome will be, then we get to strip away all of the emotion and all of the, the emotional negative or positive reaction to something we espouse. That's why facts and empirical data matter. Number four, change agents aren't popular. Okay, so it, you, you have to understand that if what you're going to do is innovate, I wanna be an innovator. I wanna be a, an agent for change. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, we are trying to get manufacturers to migrate from industry 3.0 to industry 4.0. That means we need their integrators, we need their OEMs to also jump on board. I mean, you have to understand, you will not be popular if you're an agent for change. You won't become popular until the results, the facts and the empirical data support what it is that you've been pushing, what ultimately what you've been espousing. Number five, you have to define what success is. Okay, success is different for all of us. So what is success to me? My kids will ask me all the time, what is it my biggest fear is? Dad, what's your biggest fear right now? Uh, and I'll say my fear hasn't changed since I had my first child. And that is my only fear is that I will die before I've prepared my kids for the real world. That's it. That is literally the only fear I have in, in life. Everything else I control. I can't control when I die. How do I define success? At the end of the day, it's not about money and it's not about possessions and it's not about the number of friends I have. What it is, is about, it's defined based on the impact I had on society. That is at the very end of the day, as I'm living the last 10 minutes of my life, as you live the last 10 minutes of your life, you're gonna turn back and you're gonna look at your story. You're gonna read it very quickly. This is the life flashing before your eyes. And you're gonna determine in a blink of an eye whether or not you left a mark, left a positive impact on the world, or whether you left a negative impact on the world, or if you left no impact on the world. Success in my eyes is that me being here mattered and it mattered for the good. That's success. All the other stuff's just noise.
okay? You have to have commitment and diligence. I am 100% totally committed to my values and to my mission. And as an extension of that, I'm committed to my people. That is the, the, the people who've climbed into the foxhole with me. I'm 100% committed to them because they share the same values and they're trying to achieve the same mission. I'm 100% committed to what it is we're trying to achieve. My dad used to say, you know, you, whenever you enter into a discussion, whenever you join a social discussion, you better damn well make sure you're the smartest person in the room. Otherwise, keep your mouth shut. You achieve that higher level of knowledge through diligence. I don't believe that most of our accomplishments are a function of our innate gifts, the stuff we were born with. I believe most of our accomplishments are a function of our environment and how we interacted with it. And we do that through outworking everyone. I mean, just because your friends go out and party on a Friday night or they, they take, take Saturdays and Sundays off, doesn't mean you should be. I mean, I, there's no one who works more hours in a week than I do. I don't know, I, I mean, only the most successful people in the world work more than I do. And, and I'm okay with that. I, I mean, trust me, at the end of my life, when I'm trying to define whether I was successful or not, I'm not gonna lament the fact that I spent my entire life committed to my values and my mission. I'm not gonna say I work too much. I'm only gonna say I work too much if I worked in a meaningless job. If what I was doing was meaningless, then I'm gonna say I worked too much. Well, hell, if, if it had no meaning, I might as well have spent the whole, all my time on the beach. So you need to be committed and you need to outwork everyone, okay? And then this is the last one and I actually added it at the end. I wanna make two points here. Number one, you cannot be afraid to make mistakes. In fact, your goal should be to make mistakes. We learn from the mistakes we make. We do not learn from the successes. Okay, we learn from the mistakes. Make a shit ton of mistakes. Piss a lot of people off, okay? Make mistakes, piss people off, get people angry, and then recover quickly. Okay, learn from that mistake, learn from that interaction, and recover quickly. And here's the other, the second point of this. There is no such thing as irreversible damage. There is no such thing as irreversible damage. There's no mistake that you can make that you cannot recover from, none. And, and, and that has been my mentality throughout my entire career. It has been my, my mentality throughout the, the entire arc of my life, all right? So anyway, that's the mindset. It's totally not tied to uh, Industry 4.0 or the technology or anything that we're talking about. It's, it's designed for me to get warmed up, but also I wanna answer some of the questions that come to me in private LinkedIn messages. How did you get to where you are? Um, any, do you have any recommendations for how I can change my approach to my professional life to, to achieve the type of success that I'm looking for? Honestly, this mindset's important. It's, you know, this is meant to be a follow-up to the GOAT video that we did. You know, what does it take to be the greatest of all time? This is meant to be a follow-up to that. You know, the, what does it take, uh, what is the mindset you need to have on a, day, on a daily basis? right? Uh, day after day after day, how do you need to be approaching not just your profession, your, but your personal life? This is how you, you should be approaching your interpersonal relationships, who, who you select as a partner, you know, from your mindset. Which brings me to one last point. So uh, one of the things I, I tell people all the time is, um, you know, my wife and I have been together for 21 years. Uh, we've been married since 2002. Uh, so we've been married for 17 years. And uh, so many of our friends, our contemporaries who got married at the same time that we did, are all divorced. And in fact, when you look at my, my kids' friends, the vast majority of them are you know, from broken homes. Their, their parents are divorced, right? And yet we're still together. And so people will ask us, I mean, invariably, you know, how did you guys navigate your 20s and 30s and somehow end up into your 40s still together. And I, you know, my answer is different than what my wife answers, but my answer is always, you know, I didn't marry for love. I mean, I love my wife, but that's not the reason I married her. I married the woman who made me better. I, I chose the partner who made me a better man. I chose the partner who was strong where I was weak. I also chose the partner who was weak where I was strong. Because in marriage, we are gonna fall in and out of love a million times over the course of a, you know, a four or five decade marriage. And when we're in those downturns, you have to have a reason to stay together. And that reason needs to be something higher than just love. And, and the reason I bring that up is because it goes to the core of my mindset, right? I mean, tr trust me, when I tell people that, they think I'm insane, uh, which means I'm not popular. When I tell them that, they think I'm a jerk. Uh, they have different opinions than I do. But what I do is focus on the facts and empirical data. That is that we've maintained, not only are we still married, after 17 years and, and raising our children and starting businesses together, 
but we're, you know, we have one of the strongest marriages of anyone I, I know. Um, I mean, she's my homegirl, right? And that's through a commitment and diligence, right? You, we worked at it, we were committed to it, we made a shit ton of mistakes, recovered really quickly, and we share the same common values. I mean, so, and again, the mindset is, is it, it, my mindset doesn't just apply to my professional life, it provides, it connects to my, my personal life as well. I mean, it is who I am as a human being. And that's why authenticity and transparency are so important in our business, because it takes too much energy to be someone who you're not. Anyway, that's the mindset.